Roy Lichtenstein, Monet's Garden Goes Pop, has really struck a chord. It has received wide international and national acclaim in publications ranging from London's Financial Times and House and Garden UK to Architectural Digest and Travel and Leisure. The exhibition showcases the legendary pop artist's take on several staples of the public imagination. Claude Monet's paintings of his garden and surroundings at Giverny. The display of these large-scale, rarely seen artworks by Roy Lichtenstein are accompanied by a complete transformation of the downtown Sarasota campus's 15 acres into Monet's garden at Giverny, but imagined through the aesthetic of Lichtenstein. It is like stepping into Roy Lichtenstein's world if he had created a world based on Monet. Our horticulture team took the principles that Lichtenstein applied to his artwork and applied those to the interpretation of Monet's garden at Giverny. This innovative, immersive interpretation has never been done before. So if you haven't seen it yet, take a peek at this short video. And we're first going to start with the museum portion of the exhibit with the artworks and the photographs. So I am thrilled to introduce Jeannie Perales, our Vice President for Learning, Engagement, and Museum Exhibits to talk about the museum portion. Thanks, Jeannie. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. We're really pleased to be able to share our exhibition with you. We hope you'll enjoy uh, learning a little bit about how our team works together to put these shows um, to put these shows on for our audience. So um, first, we've got a little video. It's just shy of four minutes, and we're going to show you the installation in the museum, and then we'll talk about the pieces themselves and kind of how the show comes together. So, um, Wendy, if you could. Play the next slide, please. That would so right now we're in the South Gallery of the Museum of Botany and the Arts, and we are preparing um, for this installation. So we've we've hung this picture, which is a picture of Roy Lichtenstein in the 90s. He's working here on the water lily series, which of course is based on Monet's water lilies. Um, and so you can see him here in his studio working on that. We have a lot of other pictures in this room too. Over here, there's you know, reproductions of historic images. Um, we have them just kind of leaning against the wall right now um, because we're in the midst of this installation. But you hear, you see pictures of him at work in his various um, studios, and then also in some gallery spaces um, with fellow artists, uh, including Andy Warhol and James Rosenquist. Um, so, you know, as most other pop artists, he got his start in the galleries of New York City in the 60s. So over here, we've got a picture of him with his uh, sons. And one of his big inspirations was his sons loved to buy bazooka bubblegum. And so they would get the little cartoons that were in the wrappers. And that kind of gave him the idea of um, reproducing popular images, which of course is part of the pop art movement. So here we are, we're in the hallway. And um, again, we're still you know, in the midst of installing this. Over here on the walls, on the windows, We've um, put some window finals in the windows. Um, they're images of Monet's garden at Giverny. And um, they were actually taken by a photographer who lives in Venice, Florida. So we purchased the rights to use that in here, again, to just emphasize um, 
Lichtenstein's connection to Monet's creations. So in here we're going to put pictures up, again, um, historic reproductions of historic images that um, kind of showcase Lichtenstein's work and his style. And then we also have uh, images of Monet and his gardens um, and his beautiful home. But one of the things that Monet did when he started doing his series was um, he was kind of doing away with this concept of a, a single master work. Okay, and that's why the pop artists were so inspired by lots of different impressionists because they were also doing the same thing. They were making multiples, they were creating series of images. And so really Lichtenstein in the 60s was doing what Monet did in the 1800s. This is a picture um, that was taken of Roy Lichtenstein in the 90s where he's working on his Water Lily series and he's at his Southampton studio here. Um, we have a reproduction of this image here in the North Gallery to kind of contextualize um, this work with all the works that people are going to see as they walk into this next gallery. So in here, this is where we have, of course, the climate control and all the security measures uh, in order to accommodate masterworks. And we have, um, we've actually built some new walls here so that we can accommodate these really large, I mean, these are kind of monumental works that we're going to be showcasing. So we've added a wall right here and we're going to put a beautiful vertical um, water lily, much like the one I just showed you that he was working on. And that comes from the Norton on the east coast of Florida. Over at the fireplace, we'll have three haystacks that are going to be showcased there. And on these walls over here, we're going to put a huge eight foot long uh, water lily that's coming to us from the Perez Art Museum in Miami on that wall. And on this side, we've got another vertical water lily and uh, a study for it. You can actually see his, his drawing, his techniques. So this room will be really filled and colorful, um, and I think guests are really going to love it. So what you're seeing here, um, this picture that you're looking at, the large one, is the water lilies with water lilies with willows from the Perez Art Museum in Miami. And this is actually what kicked off the whole idea for this show. Um, Jennifer was at the museum a few years ago and sent me a picture of it and said, look what they have at the Perez. I think we could do a show on Lichtenstein's interpretation of Monet's garden. And I just thought that was really a phenomenal idea. And so we just started to pursue that and look for other objects that we could borrow. So on the left, you see a uh, water lily with clouds. And that came from another Florida-based museum, the Norton in West Palm Beach. So we're very lucky to secure these two big, beautiful pieces. The small piece that you're seeing in between is a study for water lily with Japanese bridge. That's you're going to see in the next slide. Um, Wendy, can you change? Thank you. And so there on the left, you see water lily with Japanese bridge. And that came from a private collection in New York. Um, so Lichtenstein worked on, he did six different iterations of water lilies. We have three in our display along with that very sweet um, study for it. Next slide, please. You can see here on the other side of the room are two yellow haystacks. The one in the center right over the mantle is from a local collector and supporter of ours um, in Sarasota. And Jennifer was at her house and saw it hanging on the wall and said this would be perfect to be part of our exhibition. And she very generously agreed to lend it to us. Um, and then on either side of that are two other haystacks that were loaned to us from the Lichtenstein Foundation. So we were very lucky to have the support of the foundation um, because they were you know, kind of intellectually curious about what we were doing. So that's how the museum portion of the exhibition comes together. And as we secure those loans and we start to look at the key tenants of the artist's work, you know, in this case, it was the use of Bende dots, as you can see, those are um, printer's dots. Lichtenstein was inspired by his son's um, Bazooka Joe bubblegum comic strips, and that's why he started making um, dotted artwork in 1961, and he stuck with it his whole life. So we took that, um, the Bende dots, and um, some of the other concepts or the key tenants here, like the flat planes of color, the use of primary colors, um, and then the black outlines that you see around that one solo haystack. 
Um, and we extract those kinds of tenants and ideas, and then the horticulture team applies that, applies those ideas to their design. Um, another thing you're gonna see is the use of this green that's kind of right behind my head. Um, that's the pop. So that is um, Monet's green, and he used this very specific green in Giverny. And so our horticulture team used that green kind of throughout the gardens to connect the various vignettes um, to, the, to the exhibition. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to Jennifer, who's going to introduce our horticulture team to share what you're going to see in the gardens. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Jeannie. So now on to the horticultural portion, and um, I'm thrilled to introduce our senior vice president for horticulture, Mike McLaughlin, and his team, and he will introduce his team members. But basically, I tell everyone, you have visual art, you have performing art, but you also have living art. And what this team is doing is so exciting and innovative. And what they have done is really looked at Monet's gardens at Giverny and recomposed them through the lens of Roy Lichtenstein. So they looked at all of the iconic elements that you envision when you think of Monet's garden and thought, well, huh, how would Roy Lichtenstein interpret those? And so in a way we've created Roy Lichtenstein's world if we created a world based on Monet. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Jennifer. It's been a lot of fun working on this show. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us, or good morning if you're in San Francisco. Um, I, what we're going to do is uh, bounce back and forth between Christopher and myself to talk about some of the outdoor vignettes, and then Angel will be talking about the conservatory. But before we get into those, I just wanted to show you a brief video that was about the making of it. What goes into creating one of these art horticulture exhibits? So we have a video for you that we'll play right now. fabricate these and waterproof the inside of them so they'll last six months. So this is all ready to take soil and plants. And then we've got the roof of our Lichtenstein house. This is 20 feet long, 12 foot tall. And uh, this is just the roof area that we put together. We built this in pieces. Again, 20 feet long, 12 feet tall. And this is gonna go out by the south point. Well, this is the front door to the Monet house. It's like a stage set, it's just flat. And then we're gonna, all of the white surface will be covered with red polka dots. So it's gonna be bende dotted because Monet's house was pink. So of course in cartoons, the way they make pink is a white background with red dots. So, uh, so this is just the detail for that house. It's about 12 feet high and I think about 25 feet long. So it's a pretty big house. Because of the sheer distance from our shop, we had to build this in pieces, and then each piece had to be prime two coats, finished coat of paint, and then a polyurethane coat. It's been a big undertaking amongst many other projects. This is by far the biggest show we've ever done. I kind of liken it to the equivalent of building a two-story house in about 30 days. But it's all good. We've got a fantastic team and. Everybody's thrown in the right direction and we're going to make it happen. So that gives you an idea of 
what goes into making all of this? So here we have the finished product. We have the Monet's house and you will see the front door I was working on in my office. You saw how we made it. You also notice it looks pink, but you, you saw in the video, it's not pink. It has uh, the Ben Day dots all over it. So it uh, shows how that, that works. So we've recreated a scene from Monet's garden because his house is so prominent in his garden at Giverny in France. Um, it's really uh, quite a feature in the garden and we really wanted to represent it. Um, so the, the, we planted this lush garden around it, of course, using subtropical species, right? We can't use the tulips or the irises that you might find in Giverny, but we're using other plants that grow well here in Florida. And it's a very interactive exhibit. There are benches, there are pathways. You can walk up the steps if you like. We like our, our visitors to really get into our exhibits, if you will. And the Monet green that Jeannie was talking about, you're going to see this as a unifying element throughout the whole thing. But notice the house, it's flat, it's cartoon-like, everything's outlined in black. So that's what makes it this Lichtenstein styled house. And we're very proud that pretty much everything in, in this exhibit was custom made, if not by our own staff, by contractors under our uh, supervision. So I wanna introduce to you our gardens manager, Christopher Ellenstar. He's going to take us uh, to the next vignette. Christopher? Great, thank you, Mike. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, so this is our koi pond. Um, and we did actually add a, a few living water lilies to kind of evoke Monet. Um, but really the rest of it um, is just transformed into kind of a pop art feast for the eyes. Um, so we have that two dimensional bridge in the Japanese style um, that we have at, uh, in Monet's gardens. And that was actually very interesting to install over our pond. Um, and then the arbor over it is the, the wisteria arbor, but we built it two dimensional with the Bende dots. Um, and um, the uh, fake water lilies down in the bottom, those come right out of uh, Roy Lichtenstein's artwork. You probably recognize those from the video earlier. Um, and then in the next slide, you can see we kind of took some liberties with our pop art edition with um, our own koi pond, our own koi with his own sound bubble. Um, and really that is just so cute when visitors are feeding the koi right in front of that um, pop art version. So I really get a, a kick out of that. Next. Mike, you're on mute. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> All right, let's talk about haystacks. Uh, otherwise I can mime it maybe some, somehow. Um, so we really wanted to bring the haystacks that uh, Monet and uh, Lichtenstein did to life in the gardens here. Um, so they both did haystacks. And what was interesting, they both did a series of them. And one thing we noted was they really played with a change of color. Uh, so they painted the haystacks in different times of day, different seasons, and really studied how they looked different. And we wanted to have that same effect with our haystacks. Originally, we thought we'd do like a tri-vision billboard that would change, change the picture, and that was too complicated. So what we ended up doing was designing it like an accordion, and you're going to see what happens. So here we have looking at it from one side, and it looks like the morning haystacks. And then in the next slide, you're going to see how if the visitor walks around it, you're going to see what we would have an afternoon haystack here. So it's all just by the visitor moving throughout the space and it changes color in front of your eyes. Uh, it was complicated carpentry, but our in-house carpenter, Eric Montefusco, did a great job of bringing this illusion to life. Next slide. So these are what we still call our paint box beds inspired by Monet's um, gardens. And these at his gardens were long, narrow beds um, planted with just very colorful flowers. And we wanted to figure out how Lichtenstein um, would see those beds. So we took some inspiration from his brushstroke series, which is um, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional um, brushstrokes in different shapes. So we kind of recreated that um, in a living form in these uh, raised beds with monochromatic plantings. 
So here you can see the uh, the pop art brush there, kind of brush stroking that um, green bed. Um, and then in the next slide, um, we added a um, tube of um, artist paint that you know has been squeezed until it went splat, and then created that uh, red bed. Um, and then we used the uh, the black edging um, to create that thick black border that you always see in um, the kind of cartoonish uh, work that uh, Lichtenstein does. And this one is very interactive with people being able to to walk in with the gardens and then have the uh, photo ops. Next. Then you've seen uh, quite a few bridges so far, and you'll see more. But uh, you know the Japanese bridge at Giverny is probably one of the most iconic images, and it's one that Monet featured in his paintings, and it shows up in the Lichtensteins as well. So we wanted to have one that was interactive that you could actually walk over. So we designed this bridge just for this exhibit. Uh, you know, uh, after the style of the one at Giverny. Um, we uh, dug the pond uh, all around it, and then of course planted it with live lilies, doesn't show in this photo, but live lilies, and then the Lichtenstein lilies, very similar to the ones we saw at the Koi Pond. Of course, it's rendered in the Monet green, so you, there's no mistaking where you're at. And then in the background, a little hard to see, but I just want to describe it to you. We wanted to have weeping willows. That was a texture that was so important in the scenes of the ponds at Giverny with these weeping willows in the background. There you see the cursor. It's hard to see in this photo, but we put in Lichtenstein weeping willows. So we used that uh, wood grain pattern that you saw in the artwork in the mansion. And then to create the pendant foliage of the weeping willows, we used, of course, what would a garden that studies air plants use? We use epiphytic cacti to create that weeping Pendant foliage. Next slide. Yeah, and then other than the bridge, I think the most iconic scene at Monet's gardens is with those massive arches that um, lead up to his house. Um, and those are all planted with a, you know, kind of an excess of flower color. And we tried to capture that even though on one side of it, we've, we have a, a brick patio. So to problem solve that, we constructed uh, some large planters and it gave us an opportunity to create those uh, large kind of pop art terracotta flower pots. Um, and those are shaped in triangles so that they always maintain that two dimensional look as you're passing through it. Um, and um, in the next slide, you can just see more of that, you know, beautiful um, flower color that, you know, is not necessarily typical of Marie Selby Botanical Gardens but it kind of got us out of our wheelhouse and really um, played around with a lot more annuals and a lot more color. And the guests have really, really enjoyed that. Um, and then the next slide, um, you can see those arbors again, and those are custom made, they're 16 feet wide. And we pre-grew those vines in our nursery on the wire mesh um, to give them a much, um, a larger scale um, on day one. So we grew them for several months before we installed them. Um, and this vignette, you can just see how inviting it is to walk through. Um, although visitors really just can't help themselves, but they stop throughout the, the whole um, archway and just admire all the little details and get fully immersed. Next. And we liked that LA so much we decided to make another one, <laughs> so we made a smaller one. And this is an interesting place because this was really, uh, when Jennifer was conceiving this exhibit, one of the first sites within the garden that really inspired her because this is sort of a very similar setup to what you see at Giverny. So in this case, uh, with this view to your back would be the mansion. So when you exit the mansion, this is what you see. And it's similar to what, as visitors exit Monet's house, this is what they see. They see the long LA, and then the far end is a gate. So here we rendered the gate with Vende dots and Lichtenstein style black outlines. We made uh, you know, lush gardens around it and pre-planted the vines, like Christopher was saying, with the other LA. And then we, we decided to hang some wisteria on it. So this is our Lichtenstein wisteria and where we have a white background 
and then use purple dots. So it gives you sort of that lavender color of wisteria. Not a plant we can grow here. So we had to do it in our Liechtenstein style. So it, it's been really a lot of fun to do this exhibit, but we're not finished yet. So now I'm really delighted to introduce our Senior Director of Glasshouse Collections, Angel Lauda, and he's going to show you what we did in our Tropical Conservatory. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us. And you probably hear that a lot, but we're really excited to share this with you. Um, and I'm really glad that we were able to share some of those videos that sort of touch us on the behind the scenes. It's hard to see and and visualize this exhibit by just adding some photos on a screen. Um, and you see with all the like magnitude and like, the complexity of all those elements that you've got to see and all the detail and the horticultural work, it's really neat to have those videos. It kind of shows you a little uh, sneak peek into it. Our, our conservatory display is very immersive. And you know, like our goal is as always, because it's a, a small conservatory is to overwhelm the visitor's senses, almost like a sensory overload experience. And we and in this conservatory display, we sort of blurred the lines like they did in the outdoor gardens with the 2D and 3D uh, like elements utilizing props like bridges and doors and windows and trellises, right? You know, and even plants, of course, plants. Uh, and they all work together to fulfill, you know, that like Monet color and landscapes and like those like iconic paintings and scenes, as well as you know, marry them with that Liechtenstein 2D bold outlines feel and look. Uh, most of our design throughout the garden and in the conservatory like, incorporates both of those designs and the artists and the, you know that duality creates a spectacular experience. Um, you know we like to call that experience like theatrical horticulture and it's something that we like use to explain what the visitor is seeing and experiencing and hopefully in this next video you guys will see a little bit of the conservatory ongoings behind the scenes. Let's see the video. <laughs> a visitor walks into the conservatory they are immediately transported into our design right you can see that very large Liechtenstein image on this like Liechtenstein image on the side there um, that image is called sunrise and he created that in 1965 uh, we were lucky enough that the estate allowed us to use this image and so we super I mean, we enlarged it significantly and superimposed it into the glass of the conservatory using a vinyl wrap uh, similar to what they use on buses for marketing and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, like this scene um, has this point perspective view that leads to this Monet inspired little gate in the back. Of course, like the gate is set far back, which is why it's small. And you have these umbrella trellises. This is something that we saw a lot in Monet's garden. It's these like um, trellises that were covered in vines. Our vines, so outside, you know, it's really hard to do like Mediterranean. Like inside the conservatory, it's even harder to do subtropical plants that we use tropical foliage right so that's how we create this colorful monet inspired uh like beds that utilize all the colors and and then of course we add that yeah, two-dimensional Liechtenstein view the vines we use vanda orchids to like mimic and and uh, you know make it look like if it's like flowering vines the beds we use a lot of tropical foliage so bromeliads begonias gisneriads orchids of course uh, 
ferns, marantas, you know, prayer plant family, uh, leos, there's so much color in there. And it's like, again, that sensory overload. And you, it, and you also saw like the set pieces. And so that's where the theatrical or horticulture comes in. It's sort of like, is it there? Is it real? And that play with that two-dimensional, three-dimensional is, you know, really jazzed up the exhibit. The next slide. Um, you see, this bed is actually one of the larger elements in our conservatory. It's really neat when you see a, a peak where you can see through the two-dimensional arch into, you know, this Monet two-dimensional house. This bed, we like, incorporate both of the artists again. But uh, on one side, what we decided to do was a very two-dimensional design. And so you can see the wood grain on the top of that arch next to like the purple neo Virgilia bromeliads. And we follow that as it would be a vine. And then we add the colors of greens and purples, again, mimicking uh, vine foliage and flowers. As you walk through the exhibit or, or, or the arch, the element, you're in the Monet side. And then that becomes this 3D side. And where everything is lush, tropical color, bolds of swaths of color, obviously. And then you hit that uh, two-dimensional house again with what like Mike was talking about, those uh, like red Bende dots, it looks pink, and you have those doors, those like set pieces of doors, the windows, the stairs, you can see their uh, two dimensionality. And in the next slide, you can kind of see a side view of it. And again, you can see uh, those lush beds of uh, tropical foliage. And what's really neat about this is that a lot of it looks two dimensional but with this like three dimensional feel. So like the door, the windows and the wall obviously are two dimensional, like using all those Liechtenstein tenants, but the staircase is three-dimensional, which is sort of, you know, with a bold outline. So it sort of looks two-dimensional, but as you walk up to it, it's a three-dimensional staircase. And again, this, uh, we're a research institution, and you can see this like amazing Ventolvian aggregatum that's in full bloom in front of this scene. Uh, we were utilizing our research collections as, as, as accents throughout this exhibition. Of course, they're colorful, and so they fit right into our design. On our next uh, slide, you again see, you know, like we follow Monet's house down the line. Again, you see that three-dimensional staircase, but with a two-dimensional outlining. We offer seating in this, and, and this we do to, um, you know, like sort of like immerse the visitor into the design. Like they become part of the art, right? Uh, and in a sense, they become part of the display and part of the design. You'd be surprised how many people sit there and actually do like the crossword puzzle there. Um, or they take a lot of like selfies and a lot of, this is a very good picture moment because it sort of uh, draws in the visitor and allows them to be part of the display. It's very neat with those two dimensional uh, components, but you would be like a three dimensional body. On the next slide, um, this, you know, it's, it's again, no, another bridge, but this is that like recognizable and sort of like iconic Monet, like Japanese bridge scene pond with the water lilies. Of course, like again, we play with that two-dimensional, three-dimensional. And so the bridge is two-dimensional with three-dimensional orchids mimicking vines. That blue water, this is waterless. And we've been wanting, you know, we always do some sort of water feature in our designs. We wanted to make a waterless water feature. We were lucky enough to stumble on Rolux. It's just that blue material. And Liechtenstein himself used that in some of his works. I think it's called the landscapes. And uh, Rolex is a really neat material. It both reflects and absorbs light. And so it acts this ripple. It almost looks like water. And again, we have those two-dimensional water lilies that Mike and Christopher alluded to that sort of like mimic the artwork in the mansion or the museum. And we actually planted some of those with peperomias and orchids just to um, add some like flowering component to the element. Um, and there's a lot more in this scene. Uh, the, the next uh, has like sort of like the image of like a like a vertical water lilies, much like it is in the mansion. Um, we decided to play around with that and and you know I wouldn't say mimic, but um, try to represent in in plant material two dimensional uh, feel what he was doing in a, in a, in his artwork. And again, it's two dimensional bold outlines. Uh, 45 degree angles, you can see those angles at 45 degrees. 
And the last slide is like again another like immersive uh, component of the exhibit. It allows this alley, and we we actually like recreated one real one and um, flank that with seating so that again the visitor can get in there and become part of the artwork. The pandas and the tropical beds are uh, seen over and over again along with this Monet green. And I think that's it. There's so much more. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. And basically, this exhibit is up through the end of June, through June 27th. And so for those of you tuned in, we would love to have you visit if you come to our area. And this really is a very meta exhibit. It's Selby Garden's take on Roy Lichtenstein's take, on Monet's take, on his home and gardens at Giverney. So we hope you will join us.